craft beer lovers, they're willing to spend a little bit more money on the special brews, because I, I always think they're a little bit better, but are they actually worth the price? Yeah, it's, this is a good one. Team 12's Ryan Cody assembled some beer lovers, he didn't call me, to take a <laughs> test and see if they can tell the difference between expensive beer and the cheap kind, and whether you should save or splurge. Take a look. It's one of the most refreshing sounds there is, but lately, your beer might be breaking the bank. The freshest hops on the market, and you do pay a premium for that. Dylan Miguel and his team at the Shop Beer Company in Tempe are part of a growing movement of craft brewers. And I think really what that's saying is once you start drinking craft beer and you understand that flavor, then rarely are you ever going back. It's why your local liquor store is selling beer for prices you might expect to see in the champagne aisle. To get the flavor quality we want, uh, we have to spend a lot of money on the most expensive hops, the newest crop, if you will. Is it worth paying the extra money for your beer? And can you even taste the difference in price? Well, we're here at the Wandering Tortoise in Phoenix to find out. There's a little something for everyone here. What would be your beer drinking level of expertise? Um, little to none. Maybe slightly above average. Um, I drink too much. <laughs> Perfect. It's a tough job, but these three are agreeing to a blind taste test, sipping three styles of suds, light beer, IPAs, and stouts. And within each category, they will decide which is a cheaper macro brand at about three bucks a pint, which is a medium price craft going for around $5 each, and which is the most expensive, worth at least $7 a glass. We'll start with the light beer first. That one has the most flavor. It tastes like a standard light beer. Pretty good. That one's pretty good. All right, well, let's move on to the IPAs now. Getting the hops. Okay. Not near as much happening with this one. In each of the three categories, the cheapest beer was obvious. This is the least expensive. But when it comes to deciding between the middle-priced brew and most expensive... Mm. Oh, tough decisions here. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have to taste these again. Yeah. Have as many sips as you need. Not much. I'm not... I don't know. Why was this one a little bit more difficult? Dude, there's just more flavor to it. I mean, do you want to try it? Yeah, okay. That's a good beer. That's just a good beer. So it's full? Yeah, and then try this one. It's hard to tell. I think there was only like a dollar difference between the, the top two, but in the uh, the lower level ones, there really was just a difference in the taste. It was just lacking in taste, especially when you compare them directly next to the other. So it does seem to be worth spending the extra money on a beer brewed locally, but not necessarily the most expensive beer on the menu. For the variety, I would probably ship between the two more expensive beers. No surprise to those who put their all into the craft. And I was just really happy to see that the people voting uh, took craft uh, for the flavor, for the freshness, and they definitely were able to taste the difference between macro and micro brews. That was Team 12's Ryan Cody getting the best yeah. assignments under the sun. And we, I know. How do, how do, I, how do we get that? Because we both like craft beers. You have beer. to establish a I problem. I li <laughs> that's true. I, I like craft beers for the simple fact they're, you know, between 6 8% alcohol. You don't have to drink a ton of them. Yeah, you can stop drinking yeah. 24 beers in one night. That's <laughs> exactly. Good idea. Yeah. I can stop drinking my 12 packs. <laughs> that's exactly. That's good. Of so Bud they, Light. Some people can tell, some people can't. <laughs>